Welcome everybody to a look at a new Criterion Collection release and it is 1941's All That Money Can Buy also known as The Devil and Daniel Webster um, it was initially released as All That Money Can Buy I believe and then it was released as the alternate title um, I think they originally didn't want to make it that original alternate title because it was too close to another film that had a similar kind of title completely um, unrelated to the film itself but it had a similar title. So yeah, this is directed by William Dirtrill, who I've seen four other films from. The two favourites from him, though, are The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Dark City. And this is a supernatural drama, clocking in at 107 minutes long. Stars the likes of Edward Arnold, who was in Meet jo uh, John Doe, City That Never Sleeps, and Secret of the Blue Room. Also stars Walter Houston, who is the uh, father to um, the director that did Maltese Falcon is it John Houston I think it is yeah um I've seen six films all with Walter Houston being the likes of the treasure of the Sierra Madre and then there were none as well as Dragonwick also stars James Craig who was in the Cyclops and while the city sleeps um but considering he's technically the lead in this in terms of act character not necessarily actor it is a bit surprising that he wasn't in more leading roles uh, also stars finally Jane Darwell who was in The Bigamist, There's Always Tomorrow and The Oxbow Incident. So this is about Jabez Stone who is a hard working farmer trying to make an honest living. But a streak of bad luck tempts him to do the unthinkable, bargain with the devil himself. In exchange for seven years of good fortune and wealth, Stone promises Mr Scratch his soul. But when the troubled farmer begins to realise the error of his choice... He enlists the aid of the one man who might save him, the legendary orator and politician Daniel Webster. So this is thematically extremely well realised, especially as you see our uh, lead character go from a humble man, someone that is struggling with his lack of you know wealth and the poverty that is around him as well, because you know other farmers are also dealing with the same kind of situation that he's dealing with. Uh, you see him evolve from that to someone that ends up being greedy. He ends up being like the loan shark that he uh, was struggling to pay. And um, yeah, it just evolves from that where his wife ends up becoming um, estranged from him. Even the fact that he has a son isn't keeping them together. So uh, yeah, it's really, really well done in that regard. However, the plot is unfortunately predictable at certain points, which does slightly undermine the experience. But on the whole, this is an engrossing and well-executed effort. The cast is also great, it is well paced, the score by Bernard Herrmann is excellent, it is edited well by future director Robert Wise as this is three years before his directorial debut. The period production is solid, the character interactions are well handled, the cinematography is on point and it is a kind of it was kind of joyful to finally get a reference that has been in one of my favourite Treehouse of Horror episodes from The Simpsons as this does feature the um, jury of the damned. That is in that episode where, um, yeah, basically they don't have enough seats and you have, uh, I think it's Blackbeard uh, sitting on a chair and he says, I am uh, sitting on a high chair, his eye or something like that. But yeah, really rather great to get that reference as, uh, yeah, obviously The Simpsons reference many, many films over there, many series. And uh, yeah, it's really rather nice to finally get around to seeing one of those uh, films that it's referenced so uh yeah overall an excellent effort four out of five from me and uh, yeah this is a really rather nice release from criterion now it's not a 4k or anything like that i imagine it might get a 4k release at some point in the future but yeah still really rather good uh, looking uh, restoration on this so it's had a new 4k digital restoration with uncompressed monorail uh soundtrack you got audio commentary on the disc by film historian bruce eder and stephen c smith uh, who was a biographer of composer Bernard Herrmann. You got new um, restoration demonstration. You got a reading by actor Alec Baldwin of the short story by Stephen Vincent Bennett, on which the film is based. You got an episode of the Criterion Co uh, Channel series Observations on Film Art about the film's editing. Uh, you got a comparison of the differences between the July 1941 preview version of the film Here is a Man and the film's 1943 re-release as The Devil and Daniel Webster because by that point the film that it was similarly titled to had obviously long gone out of the cinema uh, out of theatres so they could re-release it as on, it's a more original and more I guess you could say um, relevant title uh, to be honest 
Uh, then you got the Columbia Workshops radio adaptions of Bennett's uh, short stories, The Devil and Daniel Webster and Daniel Webster and the Sea Serpent, uh, both featuring mu music by Herman. Then you got a trailer as well as English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Plus, we also have an essay by author Tom Piazza and a 1941 article by Bennett in the booklet that is in with this release as well, which I really, really like the uh, artwork on that, to be honest. That is obviously not in the film. But yeah, really rather nice essay. And obviously, you've got the uh, article as well in here. So, yeah, that's the, uh, the essay. With the credits at the back there, and then you got the uh, the article there as well. So, yeah, all really rather well done to be honest. Like I said, the 4K restoration looks really, really rather good. Um, one of the better ones from in terms of Blu-rays recently uh, from anyone to be honest in terms of boutique labels. Um, but yeah, still overall a really, really good film and one that I highly, highly recommend because. The director's done at least a couple of other films that I've enjoyed before. You've got a really, really good cast that I've seen in several films before as well. And even though it does have its predictable points, the themes of this resonate so well that ultimately the predictable aspects just don't really matter at the end of the day outside of obviously rating the film. So yeah, but nonetheless, thank you for watching. If you have seen this film before, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.